Perfect. Find your seat, guys. Find your seat. Um, cool. All right, guys, as you find your seat, I just want to remind you of the, sermon, uh, the, the verse of our sermon series, what we've been going through. Um, Proverbs 3, 9 through 10, it says this, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats bursting with wine. We've been talking about money. Somebody say money. And I, this, I don't know if this is going to be the last sermon in this series or not. We'll see, but I think it is. <laughs> we'll see what God does. He always changes it up on me, and, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, we've been talking about money and what it really specifically what it means to give, what it looks like to give in our lives and what it looks like to give as a church, truly give as the church. Somebody say church. What it really looks like to be the church. We are the church. Yes? We're the church. So if we're the church, we should be paving the way to what it looks like to actually give. The church should be the, the examples. The church should be the ones who are leading the way in what it looks like to give. Somebody say give. And we all have different areas. We all have different levels. Um, some of us don't even give at all or have never given before. But in this series, I really hope to activate something within you. I, I really hope that the Holy Spirit, that's my prayer for you guys, that the Holy Spirit activates something in you where you not only see that you are called to give, because we went over that, right? Everybody's called to give. Everybody's called to give 10%. It's not a, it's not a suggestion. It's a command. We are called to give. We have to give. God says you have to give, not because uh, um, uh, God needs it or he needs the money. He doesn't need anything, right? Because it's his. It's all his. We've learned that already. It's all his. So he calls us, he commands us to give back what's already his. We learned last week in Malachi, God says, will you rob the Lord of what is his? Will you rob the Lord of what is, what is his? I know these are the hard things to talk about, but it needs to be talked about. And it's, this is a command. And I want to I hopefully activate this this in you so you guys can see that this is something that really is a blessing. It's not a burden. It seems like you will have less, but really you'll have more. It seems like you'll be without, but God says you will have plenty. And this is not why we give. We don't give because of what we're going to get, right? I don't want to just give because I want to have. I want to give because I just want to give. Because it's God and his kingdom and what we're dealing with. We're talking about kingdom builders. That's the series we're talking about. Somebody say kingdom. kingdom. Kingdom builders. And if you don't get excited to build God's kingdom, I don't know what will get you excited. I don't know what else will. I can stand up here and yell at you and I can say all these things, but if you are not excited and passionate in your soul about giving to God's kingdom, building with what he wants you to build or who he's calling you to build, why he's calling you to build, where he's calling you to build, then nothing is going to get you excited. And I want you guys to get excited, to get excited, to get excited about God's kingdom. That's what we're talking about. When we're dealing with God's kingdom, this isn't something that we take lightly. This is God's kingdom. This isn't just something that we come here, oh, cool, it's Sunday, and we're here. It's that day of the week again. No, this is an everyday thing. Everyday thing. If you guys could turn to Luke chapter 15, I want to read this. Luke chapter 15, starting in verse 11. As you get there, go ahead and stand up. We want to give reading and honor to God's word as we read his word. We didn't get to do that, so don't worry. I didn't forget to stand up yet. But as we stand, we're showing God that we are honoring him as we read his word. And together, we agree that we bring honor to his word. Amen? So as you get there, go to Luke 15, verse 11. I'll give you one second to get there as I drink a few sips of my coffee. Luke 15, 11. By the way, this is um, this coffee I'm drinking right here is brought to you by. <laughs> Nobody paid me to do this. Um, so this gym that we're that we're in right now, CrossFit of Albuquerque, they make their own coffee now, and they are donating their coffee to us for free. 
Um, whenever we run out, they're going to keep refilling us over and over again. So if you guys see those little packets, those little cake cups with the gold on the top, that's, that's them. That's them. And so very good copy. Luke 15, 11. It's called Tubbs Coffee, I believe. Tubbs. It's the best you'll ever taste. 11. Again, I'm not getting anything from this. Just, just know. This, this is, I'm, not, I'm not receiving anything. So, um, all right, verse 11, it says this. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me. Somebody say give. Give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the youngest son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there, he wrote, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine or pigs. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the paws that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Somebody say, no one. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough, to, have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Are you still with me? Yeah. Verse 20. Then he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you one more time, Lord Jesus, for all that you do. Lord, we can't thank you enough, Father. We pray that this word would be written in our hearts, Father God, a word that we're probably familiar with, Lord Jesus, but we want to go deeper in, Lord, and find new things that we maybe didn't see before, Father God. So Holy Spirit, reveal to us these things that you prepared for us, Father. Nobody wants to hear from Rich, Lord. We want to hear from you, Father God. Open up our hearts, Lord. If our hearts are closed off, Lord, open them right now to receive gladly your word. Pray these things in Jesus' name and everybody said, amen. You may have a seat. You may have a seat. So like I said, we've all heard this story before. It's been taught many times. I have taught this story many times. The story of the prodigal Son, the son that was lost and now is found, right? Um, and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about, I'm not there yet, so you can leave it on the first slide. But um, this son here is, is asking something of his, of his dad. What is he asking his dad of? I'm asking you, what is he asking his dad of? Is inheritance. What's an inheritance? Money. Stop. Yeah. Money. Stop. Uh, what was what was prepared beforehand? Uh, maybe even before he was born. Um, this son goes to his father, verse eleven and twelve, and he tells his father. He doesn't ask. Notice how he doesn't ask. He commands. He demands. He says, give me. Somebody say, give me. Um, how many of you who are parents in here, um, when you're raising your children, and this is kind of where me and Jess are at even where, with our kids, but um, when our kids come to us and they tell us in a not so nice way that they want something, and they say, uh, give me that. How do you respond when you hear something like that? As a parent, what do you think? Excuse me? E excuse me? E excuse you? Or what did you say, boy? What, what are some of the reactions that you, are those the reactions that you said? Like, have you said that? They're JT, right? Like, like what? 
what just came out of your mouth? You, you're telling me to give you this? Um, I was, I was on, uh, reading this article on, on social media how um, this lady, and I don't know too, many, too much details, only what the news reports, because the news tells the truth all the time, right? Um, and so what they reported was that apparently the, these two moms who had this social media thing that they were um, giving parental advice um, and they were influencers. They had a lot of followers, hundreds of thousands of followers, and it was all on parent, parental advice, things like that. And uh, apparently somebody reported to the police that they were um, uh, basically abusing their children, that they weren't uh, treating their children right. Um, and how they were doing it was they were depriving them of food. And, uh, and apparently, again, in the news story, it said that the, the children were found malnourished. Uh, is the word, honey, emaciated? Is that the word? Um, is that right? Okay, emaciated, emaciated, whatever. Uh, basically, just they, they could clearly, they were, you know, like skin and bones. They were, they were very, very weak looking, things like that. Um, again, they didn't show pictures or anything. Like that. That's what the news said. Um, and as I kept reading on everything that these, these women were saying in the article, and I was like, that actually sounds like very good godly parental like actions, like what they were doing. And, and obviously, I'm not saying that it is, it is right at all to deprive your children of food, uh, but we've all have done this. Uh, uh, hey, if you're not willing to eat your food, you just go to bed hungry. Am I right? Am I the only one? They're calling me to re Pastor Rachel, you're depriving his kids of food. Uh, so so we, we've all said certain things like this. I mean, I, and honestly, it's like, eventually we give them a little bit of, of something or whatever, or it's like, eat that, eat those vegetables, and then you can not have to eat anything else, whatever. But you can go to bed hungry if you want. That's your choice. The food's available to you. Go ahead and eat. And I, I don't know what she was doing. I don't know how she was doing it. I don't know what. I don't know the specifics. I was just reading the story, but... Um, she was depriving the, their, her children of these things. But a lot of things that she was uh, um, saying in her posts or in her social media and things like that, and I was like, this is actually really good. And I was, look, I was thinking to myself that um, what, what the world sees, um, we live in a screwy world, right? Yeah. Very, very, very backwards screwy world. So when it comes to parental advice or disciplining our children, um, we can't do it in a certain way, you know, anymore. Obviously, there's levels to this. Not, not saying, hey, go ahead, go. nobody wants to beat their children. That's not what it says. The Bible does say spare the rod, spoil the child. Absolutely. And we can have a more conversation about this later on, but everybody disciplines correctly uh, uh, their own way, what they think is correct or not. But there, there's a certain way where you can't just give them whatever they want. Um, and if they're demanding in a certain way like that, our first reaction of you godly parents in here is like, seriously, you don't talk to me that way. You do not talk to me that way. You, you, you know how to ask me. How do you ask? How do you ask me? Oh, please, can I? Yeah, thank you. Please, can I? Absolutely, go ahead, right? And, and it, it was just crazy to me seeing this. This post, um, these, these, these women went to jail, by the way. They got arrested. Uh, I, I don't know the specifics. Don't quote me on what, I don't know. This, I just read what the news said in that article. But everything that I saw and read, what she was saying, to me, it seemed like, I'm like, these aren't even like bad things. Like, she just sounds like she's trying to raise up her kids. Like, one of the things she said was, um, um, my children have no privacy. Do you believe that? Children under 18 living in your households. Okay, sorry, I should say children who are living in your households. Do they deserve privacy? Okay, what I mean by that is, again, of course, you want them to have their own time, things like that. But um, nothing should be hidden, right? Nothing. 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 Um, and this lady says, this lady was like, and, 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 are, are, are my children have no privacy. As long as they're living in my home, these things are mine. Um, I, am, I am giving these things to them because I love them. 
uh, um, but they, they don't have any privacy and they, they can't be on the, their iPad alone or on their phones alone and, and doing all these things. Like I'm watching them very carefully and I'm being very careful what, what they are exposed to. And I have these different apps on, the, on their phones that do that as protection and stuff like that. And all these things, like they, don't, they don't need privacy because, because privacy is where we place the devil to fall into temptation. Right? I mean, am I the only one? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Am I the only one? Um, again, we can. This isn't what I want to harp on, but but it just seemed like a lot of things she was saying was actually really good, godly things, and it sounded like the children just weren't really happy with how they were being taught in these godly things, and somebody called the police on them, and the world said, oh no, you can't be doing that. You, you, that's wrong. You can't be disciplining your children that way, and they get arrested. And I just think that the more we do things, again, I don't know their specific story, but obviously if she's depriving them of food, if she's not giving them food for days, yes, that's wrong. That is bad. Absolutely. But if you are training your children in the ways of the Lord and you are giving them consequences for the things that they deserve, there's nothing wrong with that. And the more that the world sees us disciplining our kids in a godly way, they don't like that. Why? Because kids need to have their own rights. Children, 7, 5, 4, 8, 12, need to have their own rights. That's the world we're living in right now. Right now. We're children can just say, if they don't agree with their parents, they can literally just go do something. And I'm not going to tell you guys the secrets or whatever right now. This is happening right now. Right now. And parents' rights are being taken away while children are being given rights that they don't need to have right now. We live in a very, very screwy world. But, but, this son here, he demands his inheritance. And what does the father do? Excuse me? What? What does he do? He, he gives it to him. That, to me, if, if I just see that at faith, why would you do that? Why would you? Why, it's like that, that little child in, 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 in the store that you see, I want a Pikachu, I want a Pikachu, give me a Pikachu, I want chocolate, give me chocolate. And the person, oh, no, no, I'm going to give you, you get chocolate, here's, here's your Pikachu, oh, please, please be quiet. Oh, just, do you guys ever remember that, that movie, uh, A League of Their Own, with Tom Hanks? Do you remember that? There's no crying in baseball! Remember that? Remember Steelwell, the little guy? And, and, and he's like running around, and, and, and then she's like, Steelwell, here's some chocolate. And he's like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And that's, that's the only way he was pacified, right? Sometimes we, we, we do it this, this, this. Uh, I don't want to get off track. I don't want to get off track. I got I to stay on track. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? You with me? You with me? Okay. But, but this, this father doesn't, doesn't give a consequence. He doesn't get mad at him. He just gives it. Look what it says. In verse 12, he says, the, the, Father, give me, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And all it says, so he divided to them his livelihood. It doesn't even say he said anything. He just says, maybe he did say something. Maybe he said, here you go, son. Here you go. Didn't question it, didn't say anything other than, here you go. Here you go. Um. We talked about this already, but just to refresh you guys, uh, why did this son think this was his? Why? Because it was what? He was a son and it was his, his right because it was his inheritance. Um, but it really wasn't his right because he was the younger son. So he was asking for something that wasn't his time to have yet. You, see, you with me? He, but the father gave it anyway. I don't want to stay on this either, but that reminds me of Jacob and Esau. How Jacob tricks his dad, Isaac, in order to get his what? And Esau trades his inheritance for a bowl of what? Soup. 
for a bowl of soup. But Jacob was never supposed to have that inherent. It was supposed to be uh, um, um, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. That's what it was supposed to be, but it didn't happen that way. And, and why does it, <laughs> oh, I don't want to skip ahead, but, but, but there's a reason why it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> there's a reason. So this father just gives it to him, to this spoiled little Veruca salt brat. I want it now. It, he was never supposed to have it because he was the younger son. But he, he assumed this was his because eventually he was going to get it. This son was selfishly seeking his own desires and riches and demanded it be given what he assumed was his and he got it. You see, God is the best giver. Amen? Are you guys with me? Somebody say God. He's the best giver. He's the best giver. And he has certain people who have been gifted to give. I want to say that one more time. He has certain people in this world who have been gifted to give. We're all called to give just as God gives. How do we give? We've talked about this before. Cheerfully. Not out of compulsion, as the scripture says, right? We give cheerfully. We give because we want to give. We give because there's no expectation. But there are some who have been given the gift to give. And you, you, probably, you guys already saw it, but it's okay. Um, I want to talk today about the gift of giving. The gift of giving. Somebody say the gift. The gift. Say everybody together. The gift, the gift. of giving. The gift of giving. The father gave the son everything without a second thought. He didn't give him some of his inheritance. He gave him everything. Everything. Without a second thought. Even though he didn't deserve it. Even though it wasn't his time to receive it. But the fact that the son asked for it, the father was gracious to give it anyway. You need to understand something. Your heavenly father trusts you. It's not my mic. Your heavenly father trusts you and will give you a lot of times, you with me? And he'll give you a lot of times what you ask. Did you guys hear me? Your heavenly father trusts you and he will give you, a lot of times, what you actually ask him. He'll give it to you, what you ask. Why does God do this? Because why? He loves you. God's word says, ask and it will be given, Matthew 7, 7. Psalm 2, 8, ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage, your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. And you're probably thinking, no, Rich, God only gives when you follow his word and when you obey his commandments and do what he says according to his will. Would you agree with that? I mean, that's what his word says. 1 John 3, 2, 2. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. John 15, 7. If you abide in me, my words abide in me. You ask and, you and what you wish will be done for you. That tracks. I get it. But oftentimes, God will give you what you ask, listen, even though he knows you're asking out of a greedy mindset. Did you hear that? Why does God do this? Well, one, because, or A, because of free will. God, this is what I want right now, and I'm going to go get it. Okay? Go ahead. I gave you the decision to be able to Make it, albeit the wrong decision, but go ahead. Free will. If there wasn't free will, we wouldn't really be loving God, right? If there wasn't free will. If we didn't have the decision to choose God, we wouldn't really be choosing God. We would be forced to choose God, and then it wouldn't really be love. It would be domination. It would be, you know what I'm talking about? 
It wouldn't, it wouldn't be real love. So, so God will still give to you, even though it's, a, it's out of a greedy mindset, A, because of free will, and B, we talked about this before, because it's a test. We talked about that, right, with the, with the rich young ruler and what he went through a couple weeks ago. That it's a treasure test, right? Do you guys remember that? I'm talking about it's a treasure test. We're, we're tested all the time when we are faced with, with treasures. It was a test when Satan said, uh, uh, Jesus, come up with me on this high mountain. I will give all of this to you if you bow down and worship me. It was a test. Somebody say test. Yes, God trusts you, but he also trusts that you'll make the right decision in the test. But sometimes we don't make the right decision, and he knows it. Because sometimes you have to go through the fire in order to be refined. But how many of us think that we know better? How many of us think we used to know better back in our 20s? I know I'm not that much older. I'm 35. But when I think back to my 20s, and I used to think that I knew everything. I used to think because I'm studying God's word and I know his word and things like that, um, that I know just what to do and I can go out here and do this and I can go out here and do that and I could talk a certain way to my parents because I'm a man now. I'm 19 now. I'm over 18. I'm a man. My mommy treat me like a man. I'm a man. And she's like, boy, you better... I'm going to slap you. I don't care how old you are. Is that just me? I mean, do you guys remember how you were in your 20s? Right? I mean, you, you think you know everything. And, 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 and no, I know. Uh, uh, I, I know what I'm doing. Isn't that what they say? I know what I'm getting myself into. Do you? That's what the parents say. Do you? Are you sure? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm a man. I'm a woman now. I'm a woman. I know, I, know what I, I know what I'm doing. I know who I'm dating. I know how to stay safe. I know how to stay pure. I know how to stay abstinent. I know what to do. I know what God's word says. We think we know everything. And then when we think we know everything, we, we not only speak to our parents in a certain way, we speak to God in a certain way, telling God, give me this, Lord, because I want it, and I want it now. How many times can you think of those of you who can you remember back in your 20s? Maybe you didn't ask for it. You just went and got it, and you received it anyway because God allowed it. Did you ever think about that? You may not have asked for it, but you really asked for it. Does that make sense? You know how parents say it? You're asking for it. They never asked for it. They never verbally articulated exactly, specifically what they, but by their actions, they went out and got, or we went out and got what we want. So I remember one time uh, I wanted to go camping with my friends and I didn't have any money. And I was like, uh, oh, cool. I don't even know if I remember, ever remember telling you this, but um, I wanted to go camping so bad. I had no money. I had no money for gas. And I couldn't leave with them to go out there. I was like, hey, I'll meet you guys out there. I'll go out there, but, but, but um, um, wait for me, blah, blah, blah. Wait for me in Hemis and things like that. And so I was like, I got I to gotta figure this out. Um, I know what I'll do. I'll sell my guitar. And this was like a, an electric guitar. Um, and we, you know, like you guys know, we've grown up playing in bands, things like that and all this. And it, it, was, it was actually a, the guitar that, I think I've told you this before. Maybe I haven't, maybe not. But Casper, remember that old green electric guitar? I sold it. I sold it at a pawn shop for like, I don't know, 60 bucks. Some dirt cheap, like it was bad. It was an Ibanez electric guitar. It was very nice. And I was like, cool, cool, I'm going to go. And I go out there, and, I, and I, 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 I couldn't find them. I looked everywhere, had to drive back, got a ticket because I was speeding on the way back. It was just, and then, and then I uh, didn't make that, that court date got fined even more so. We just like, and I had to go to court in Bernalillo because that's where I was outside of their, I was in their jurisdiction, right? And so 
<laughs> this, this thing that I did in my 20s, these stupid decisions, because it was something that I really wanted it, and I wanted it now. I mean, all the dumb things that I did, you guys can think of the same dumb things that you did because you wanted something. If I think of all the dumb things I did for girls, relationships, I'm not calling the girls dumb. I was the dumb one. And I wanted to impress her. I wanted to show myself a certain way, things like that. And I was selling movies and video games and doing all this stupid stuff. So dumb. Because I thought I knew better. But God gave it to me. He let it happen. Even though I really wasn't asking specifically for it, I was asking for it. And God says, here you go. God will give you what you ask so that you'll be able to grow. You hear that? We'll get to that more in a second. Look at verse 13. Look at verse 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted. Somebody say wasted. His possessions with prodigal living. He wasted it. He wasted it. He wasted it. This son demanded his dad give him money. And was it really his money we learned last week? Whose money was it? It was really his father's money, right? His father just placed it in a place that was prepared for him at a later time. It was his inheritance. And the son demanded his inheritance. And he spends it on lavish living. Really, you could say... Um, This, this son, you know, wanted to be a man, but was he a man? He was pretending to be a man. He was telling everybody else, I'm the man. I'm the man. I'm the man. Give me my inheritance, dad. Give me what's mine. I'm the man. Um, he really wasn't. He was a boy. And it's easy to look at this boy and say, yeah, I don't act that way anymore, and I'm a I'm older now, and I've learned my lessons, and God is saying, really? Really? Because you're 55, 60, 65 years old, and you're still acting the way this boy did with your finances. What do you mean, Rich? Maybe you don't give, and you're saying, this is mine, Lord. This is mine. And you're still that same little boy holding on to things that you want to be in control of. And you're not being the man God has called you to be. Same with women. This boy, because that's what he was. He was a boy, was making decisions that weren't manly decisions, that weren't decisions that, that God created him to be. And this, this boy, when it says he wasted his possessions with prodigal living and he spent all he had and things like that, um, would you guys agree with me that this boy was, was really giving? Would you agree? No? Do you want me to explain? This boy was giving. Say Giving. If you're spending, that means you're what? You're giving. So when you go buy a shirt or a, your pair of pants or whatever, who are you giving to? The store. When you go buy a, a drink at Starbucks, who are you giving to? So you're, so you're giving. Somebody say giving. You're giving. So this, this boy, everything he was spending it on, all his lavish living, he was giving. So I think it's safe to say that he was giving. He was really giving with his lifestyle. He's, he's giving. So he knew how to give. Are you with me? He knew how to give. He was just giving out of greed to receive what he was going to get out of it. So let me ask you this. Where are you giving? 
You're giving somewhere or to someone. Where are you giving? And this goes, I don't have enough time in this morning to be able to sit here and tell you, stand here and tell you about all the situations that you all find here, that we all, because we're all included in this. Right? Am I the only one? We all give to certain people or places that are not where God wants us to give. And you fill in the blank. You don't have to stand up here and tell you where you're giving. It's okay. But God sees where you're giving. So where, where are you giving? Because you're giving to someone or something. You're giving to someone or something. I believe we all have it in us to give. Somebody say give. Yeah. It's coming to a place of self-examination. Seeing where you are giving more than the kingdom of God. Are you with me? And it started, it started with money. The son says, give me my inheritance, father. Give it to me. But it led to him giving so much more than that. He was giving his money to sex from prostitutes. He was giving money. But really, he was giving away pieces of himself. He was giving to get more, probably gambling, because this is what people do, right? They see they get a certain amount of money, and they think, oh, if I just, I can make more money out of this. It's like the, the old story of Pinocchio, how he got tricked into having more money. I said, if you do this, you know, this is what you need to do. Put, lay it all out there, and you'll get more. And people think that this is, all the people that have won the lottery, I was reading this, and I don't want to harp on this, but all the people I was reading about who won the lottery, and, and even the, the, the most recent one in 2023 that won the lottery, um, have wasted it. Wasted it like that, that fast. Uh, uh, every story I read about everybody, and they were trying over and over and over. Some people won the lottery twice, one in one year, and the next year they won it again. Remember how I said some things aren't always good things? Some good things that we think that are good, that are gifts from God. Thank you, Lord, I won the lottery. And God's like, that wasn't from me. That was from the devil. And, and, and these people, they, they see these things, and then they, they, they use it because they're focusing on it, and they're spending it on all of these things. They're wasting it. And then they find themselves either in a worse situation or going back to the same place that they were on welfare, on food stamps, because they spent millions of dollars in the matter of a year. Every single person, every single person that I was reading that have won the lottery, every single one. And this is what this guy was doing spending his money on sex, spending his money on prostitutes. And he didn't realize he was really giving away pieces of himself. See, he was giving. Somebody say give. When you're giving to a certain place or certain someone, you're giving yourself away. You're giving something. You're giving something. Turn to your neighbor, say, you're giving something. It's okay, call them out. That's why we're here, for accountability. If we can't be a humble, open, and transparent church, look at each other and say, you're giving something. You're giving something. We're all giving away something, and it may not even be that, oh, that extreme, or that thing, or, or oh, no, I would never do that rich. But then again, you, you're not even giving to the church. But that, that's not that bad. That's, that's God, God knows my heart. God knows my heart, and he knows where I'm at, and he knows my sister. Yeah, he does, and he's commanding you to still give. But Rich, it's too hard, and I only have a little bit. Give what you have little. Give the little that you have. That's what I'm trying to say. But, but we don't want to do that. And, and, and again, this is why nobody wants to preach these sermons, because this is why nobody's really clapping but JT. Because, because these, are, these are hard. Nobody's, amen, yeah. <laughs> nobody's doing that. Because there are only certain people who understand what it takes to give. This is why it's my job to teach you and equip you what this looks like and how to really live this out. Because if you get this, if you can give the way God wants you to give in the gift God has given us, the way he wants you to give, 
then you'll start operating in a place and position, not just in abundance, not just from the things that you can have and get, but out of a place of contentment, out of a place of being fulfilled, not in the way you think, what the world thinks, I gotta have, I gotta have, I gotta have, I gotta have, I gotta play that lottery, I gotta play the lottery, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta take that stock, stock, stock market uh, or stock exchange and do all these things. I don't know, I don't even know how to do any of that stuff. I, I gotta buy Bitcoin, I gotta buy Bitcoin, I gotta buy Bitcoin, and I gotta change all these things into real money and all this stuff like that. Like, that's what the world is doing right now because they're so focused on being in love with money. We've talked about that before, right? We talked about that before. And, and, and I know we may talk about this later on, I don't know. But God says, you can't serve me and serve two masters. You can't serve me and you can't serve money. You can't say, I love God, I love God. And maybe you're not, you're not spending all this money. Or maybe you're not, you're not doing all these crazy extravagant things. But again, you're not giving. And God is saying, why are you serving money? I'm not serving money. Then why aren't you giving? This boy was giving, giving, and giving, and giving. Because what he had really wasn't enough, right? That's always how it is. You get just to give, to try and get more. But this boy didn't realize he was giving more of his heart to greed. And in all that he was giving and giving and giving and giving, more than anything, he was giving his time over to the world. You can put it this way. More and more, he was giving his time to Satan. We don't, we don't think about it this way. We don't, we don't realize what we're actually doing when we're robbing God of what is actually his, when we don't practice tithing, we don't practice regularly giving and first giving, right? We read it in the very beginning. What's our scripture, this whole series, honor the Lord with your wealth and the first fruits of all your produce. So yeah, Rich, I, I gave at the end of the month after I paid all my bills, after I paid all these things. And then I had, you know, a few bucks left and, and then I gave to the Lord. Yes, I did it. Thank you, Lord. And God says, you are a disobedient, lazy servant. You are robbing me of what is mine. Because we're supposed to give the first fruits. Somebody say first. first. When we're not giving our first, we're not giving our best. If we're not giving our best, then we're not giving at all. And that's just the truth. And we're giving, giving, giving to all these people and all these places and all these things. As much as we spend on social media, as much time as we spend scrolling through Amazon to see what we want to get and see what we want to have. How many of us honestly really good do that? How many of you scroll through Amazon and looking for all those things? You're just like, I want to, I want to, I want to get this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to see where your priority is. Where are you giving? Where are you giving? And this boy was giving his time over to the world. We don't realize this, but we're all good at giving. Did you agree with that? Yeah, we're all good at giving. We're just giving in the wrong places. We're just giving to the wrong people. We don't realize this, but we're giving to godlessness. We're giving to golden idols. We're giving to goddesses. And this is, this is what we, see, this is, this is why I'm not giving any amens. Amens. Because we don't even want to admit where we're giving to. And this is why the church stays stuck in the same Christian culture crap that we've been caught up in. This is why chains aren't getting broken. This is why generational curses aren't getting broken because we'd rather be good at giving to godlessness and golden idols and to goddesses rather than God's church. Because all we see is the man standing up on the stage. This is why I took down the stage. This is why I don't want a stage. This is why I wanted to be around you guys. And I have it this way, like this, because I want to take out anything in me that thinks I'm above you guys. I want to take anything out of me that thinks I am above you because I'm not above you. We're together. Just because I'm the pastor of this church doesn't mean that I'm more important than you. We are all ministers and saints of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know what? I'm called to preach. You're called to preach. We're all called to preach. 
I'm just choosing to stand in my calling. Where are you giving to? Where are you giving? And when you give to all this godlessness, you eventually are given nothing. What started out as you getting from what you gave, which only lasted a moment, you have nothing. Look at verse 16. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Somebody say no one. He didn't have anything. He didn't have anything. He had nothing. And in verse 17 and 18, he starts thinking to himself. Uh, so let's read it. Look at verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of the fathers, my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. I know I said that really fast, but... I'm going to explain it now very slowly so you can understand what those three verses are really talking about. You with me? So what started with give me, somebody say give me, ended with, this is my second point, how can I give? See, this son needed to come to a place where his heart could be ready to give. You can't give until your heart's ready to give. Are you with me? You can't give until your heart is ready to give. And how does that happen? Do you know how, that's ha how that happens? When your heart's ready to give? Does anybody tell you how that happens? Does anybody know how that happens? How is your heart ready to give? How is your heart ready to give? Well, we learned last week that if you're found unfaithful with what you've been given, even what little you have will be what? Taken away. This is what happens. This is the parable of the un, uh, uh, of the of the talents and and, and of the of the other scripture that we read uh, uh, from Matthew and, and is it Mark or Luke? Uh, I forget. Mark. It's one of the one of the books. But um, both of these stories talk about what they were unfaithful with, and what little they had was taken away from them and given to the ones who were found faithful with what they had. You with me? Okay. Now listen to this. Sometimes God won't save you from your situation until you see what you need to do and where you need to go back to to start over. Let me say that again. Sometimes God won't save you from your situation. It's on, it's on the screen. Sometimes God won't save you from your situation until you see where you need to go back to to start over. What's that called? Well, that's called the right heart. That's, that's called the right heart. Sometimes he'll let you go through what you're going through in your situation until he sees that you're willing to go back to start over. So this son, father, give me, give me, give me, give me. Okay, here you go. Here you go, son. Cool. I'm going to spend it all. I'm going to spend it all. Oh, my gosh. And he's brought to his lowest point. And then he finally realizes what he needed to do. This is what God wanted to see. This is called the right heart. Somebody say heart. You need to come to a place where how you give changes. How you give changes. You with me? And so he says some really cool things here. But do you remember the story of the Good Samaritan? What happens with the Good Samaritan? Remember that? What happened? This guy's beaten to death on the side of the road, right? This pastor passes by and just, Looks at him and, ew, it's disgusting. Keeps going. And then this other guy goes, a Levite, another pastor. Oh, who's this guy? What are you doing? Oh, disgusting. And then this Samaritan comes. Or I should say it this way. This person that people don't like, that people really hate, that would never think that they would be in a position or a place to even help anybody like this person who was beaten up on the side of the road, that person comes and says, oh, man, what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go help. He gets him, picks him up, takes him to this hotel, pays for his room, and says, hey, I'm going to leave him here. You need to get medicine for him and do all these things. And, every, and whenever, whatever he needs more, I'm going to give you more. So, so this person who not, not, doesn't normally look like they would actually be giving something cheerfully, not out of compulsion, but cheerfully, 
how God wants us to give, that's the person that actually stops and, 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 and helps and gives to what this person needs. He gave all and he gave away more than what he had to do. It wasn't just a, oh, I'm gonna stop. Are you okay? All right, man, I feel better. I'm praying for you. I'm praying, let me, let me do a quick prayer over you. Lord bless you, help you heal you. God bless you. That's not what God wants to see, right? That's not what God wants to see. God wants you to see, God wants to see you being the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen? So when we get a call and somebody's in need, somebody needs help, what do we do? Let's go. What do they need? Let's go. What do they need? What do we need to do? Let's get it together. Let's do it. This is what the good Samaritan did. He gave. Somebody say gave. He gave when he didn't have to give. He gave when he didn't even know the person. He gave how God wanted him to give because he saw the need and he was able to fill it. Somebody say give. What about the woman who gave everything? We talked about her for a second. Did she give some of her money? What did she give? All. Somebody say gifts of giving. Zach, our friend Zach that we talked about last week, he was only able to start giving when he gave up his heart to God. He wasn't giving at first. He was taking. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me your taxes. Give me your taxes. Remember Zacchaeus. Give me your taxes. And then he sees Jesus. He hears about Jesus. He hears what Jesus was doing. He hears how Jesus can transform hearts and heal hearts and do all these amazing things. And he wanted to see for himself who he was. He climbs up to the tree, sees Jesus, and says, Jesus! And, and, and he didn't even say anything. Jesus just looks up. Zacchaeus, come down here. I'm coming to your house. I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to spend time with you because I didn't call on those who think they are healthy, but the, the, the ones that are sick and need us, as we talked about this last week. So he goes to his house, and then Zacchaeus says what? Lord, if I have wronged anybody, I restore it. How much? Double? Triple? Fourfold. Fourfold. I will give back everybody I cheated. Every, and, and then I'm going to sell half of my goods and give it to the poor. But, but Zacchaeus could only do that as soon as his heart was in the right place. Are you with me? You can't give until your heart's ready to give. You have to give up your heart to God. He was only able to give out of his heart when his heart was ready. Are you with me? Somebody say heart. What are you willing to give up in order to get your heart ready? Let me ask you that. What are you willing to give up to get your heart ready? What are you willing to give up? Because God is saying, you've been playing games this whole entire time. You've been playing church this whole entire time. Yeah, you're coming, and I see you sitting there, and that's great. Awesome. Good job. You want me to pat you on the back? God say, good job. You did good. How is it that God can say, well done, good and faithful servant? When he sees your heart. And he can see all of your hearts. He can see all of our hearts in here. He knows what's in our heart, and we know our hearts are deceitful above all else. I'm out of time. There's so much more. But our heart is deceitful. God sees our heart. So what needs to change? Our heart. Our heart. So the places and people and the and the and the the the, the just the places and people, I guess you could say, the places and people that we're giving to shows us where our heart's at. Because what did Jesus say? Say it, say it, Mario. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. And this boy realized something. It wasn't until he was willing to give up his greed that he was able to give his heart over to God. And all, all, all the people, the woman who gave everything, Zacchaeus, uh, the good Samaritan, all these people had something in common. Okay, they all have something in common. And I'm going to have to paraphrase here because, because we're completely out of time. But I want, to, I want to show you this. This son says this. Verse 17. When he came to himself, 
What do you see when, when you read that? What do you see? Stay with me. We're almost done. What do you see when he came to himself? What do you see? What does that tell you? That he was what? That what? That he was awake. So he, he wasn't in his right mind before. Yeah, so he wasn't thinking correctly before. His mind was clouded. His judgment was clouded before, right? So, so when he came to his mind, sometimes when we're so lost in giving to all of these other things other than God, we get lost in our mind. And when God says, my, my son, I mean, uh, when this father says, my son was lost, now he is found, uh, he wasn't just talking about physically. And some of you look at this, it's easy to look at this, this passage, like, yeah, no, I'm not lost, I'm here at church. But you're lost in your mind. <laughs> we don't have time, Lord. Oh, my gosh. So it says, when he came to himself, when he realized what he needed to do and how he needed to give, what he needed to be in order to have the right heart. What did he need to do? What did he need? Well, he says it here. He says to himself, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? I will say, or I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. The thing that, the, the most profound thing that I see here is he's telling himself what he has to do. And this is where it starts. Romans chapter 12. It starts with the renewing of your mind. You have to make a decision in your mind of how you want to give and where your heart's going to be. Amen? Yeah, if it doesn't start here, it's not going to translate here. If it doesn't start here, people aren't going to see it come out of here. If it doesn't start here, nobody's going to see it. God's not going to see it. So it needs to be renewing of your mind. So he made a decision not just, man, it wasn't, it wasn't about what he could get anymore. This is what you got to realize. Because you can read this and you can look at this. Well, he's saying, well, man, I might as well, I might as well go back because psh, where else am I going to go? And at, at least I'm going to get, I'm going to get. Somebody say get. He's like, I'm going to get. I'm going to get this and I'm going to be treated this way because my, my father treats this. You're looking at it the wrong way. This, this son had a revelation. It was only until he said he was willing to be something that God saw something change in his heart. And he said it first in here, and then he said it face to face to his father later on. Because it's one thing to start here, and then you never do it. It's one thing to start here, and that's great. My mind's renewed, my mind's renewed. Lord, you saved me, and I'm living in salvation. I know what to do. And God said, then why haven't you done it yet? I know I gotta give, I know I gotta give. Okay, then why haven't you done it yet? This son says to himself, I will go to my father and I will tell him this. And then he goes to his father and tells him, I am not worthy to be called your son. But what this son does is, is so profound to me. He says he was willing to become a servant. What does a servant do? What is a servant? The Greek word is doulos. What's a servant? You guys don't know what a servant is? What, what does a servant do? How? Practically. What does that look like? Because we can say we serve, 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 but what does that look like? What? Whatever's needed. Where? Everyone. Okay? So whatever is needed with everyone is really what being a servant is. So, so a servant back in those days was given over to a master, and he was told whatever he needed to do, and that's what he had to do. And this boy said, I don't even see myself as his son anymore. I am going to go and tell him, it started in his mind, I'm going to be a servant. This is where it changed in his heart. And we know it changed in his heart because he actually took the steps to go back and tell his father, I will be your servant. I don't have, to, man, I, I, know I'm, I know I'm going a little over, guys. There, there, there's just, can you give me one more second? Is that okay? One more minute. This, this boy said, I will, I will be he was willing to work for his father to get the good gifts that was once freely available to him. 
but it wasn't real until he revealed that to his father. Sometimes we think it's real because it's in our mind. And God says it's not real until you reveal it. He tells his father, I'm not worthy to be called your son. And there was a huge heart change. He took the time to go back. This is why God didn't save you from all your struggles. Because he wanted you to come to a place where you decide to give from your heart. So this boy gave up and gave all of himself to his father. No more entitlement, no more greed, no more gimme, 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 gimme. But how can I give to you, father? See, it's not about what he could get. I know he was hungry. I know he was tired. I know he wanted a bed, all those things. But it wasn't about that anymore. He, he was just saying, I, I just want to serve. I want to be a servant. And until you come to a place where you see yourself as a servant, you will never see yourself building the real kingdom of God. That's the truth. That's the truth. This is what God wants to see. You being able to give from a good heart, from a generous heart, being a servant. And he goes to him and says, I'm your servant. I, I, I'll, I'll, whatever you need. I messed up. Yes, I know he, he was lost and now he was found and, and repent. But it, it goes so much deeper than this, guys, because it started all with money. Somebody say money. It started all with money. And what started all off with money became so much more than what this son even realized what he was giving. He was giving, he was giving, he was giving. And he knew how to give and he gave very, very well. But now he came to a place where he was ready to give himself. Romans 12, do you remember that scripture? What does Romans 12, 1 and 2 say? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself so what? A living what? A living what? Living sacrifice, holy, pleasing, and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. This is how God wants us to be. Give, somebody say give ourselves completely where we say, I'm not worried about anything that I can't have anymore. I'm not worried about anything that I can get anymore. All I'm worried about is what I can give. And when you do that, not just say that, not just think that, but when you do that, then God says you are in the right heart place. And now you have the right posture. You have the right heart posture to present yourself in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to me. Now you are ready to give. So I'll tell you this. Don't give if your heart's not ready. I don't want you to give. You with me? I don't, because I would rather you give out of a place, a right place in your heart, than not even give at all, because then you're just giving because, well, God told me to give something. You take my dollar, Lord. Take it. And the guy's like, that's not the right hot posture. That's not how I want you to be. I want you to be able to give without even giving a second thought. I know it's just a dollar. It doesn't really mean much. But, it, but it's the heart posture, right? It's the heart posture. It's the right heart. And you can look at this and, like, I mean, it's, it's a dollar rich. It's not worth anything. This is, this is, this is nothing. Seriously? I'm like, this is, this is ridiculous. And you're thinking, this is ridiculous. This is just so infinitesimal that what can God do with this? What can God do with this one dollar? God wants to see your heart. He doesn't want to see what you think you can do. He wants you to see what he can do with your heart, not with the dollar. Are you with me? He wants to see what you can do. So are you willing to just, are you willing to just give? Yeah, I'm going to give you this dollar. Just, I don't know you, but you can have it. And it may not seem much but it's yours. And you're thinking, that's ridiculous, Rich. That's because God wants to see your heart. 
God wants to see, somebody say heart. Stand up. God wants to see your heart. God wants to see your heart. God wants to see your heart. God wants to see you give out of a good heart. God wants to see you give out of a generous heart. Being a servant. Turn to your neighbor say, are you a servant? Tell them. Turn to your second choice. Are you a servant? <laughs> are you a servant? <laughs> Philippians 4.19, everybody knows this scripture, right? And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches. And we get all excited and I'll preach, and I'll preach that. And I could say, if you give, God will supply all your, your needs according to his riches and all these things. But you need to understand what Paul is really saying here. Philippians 4.19, he's, he's talking to givers. Do you guys know that? He's talking to givers. Because Paul says, he's talking to the church. He said, you guys didn't have to give to me. I've learned how to be content in all things. I've learned to be content with little, with nothing, and I've learned how to be content with when I have. I've learned how to be content with, with nothing and with plenty, all these things, but, but you guys still gave. Even when I, I never even asked you guys to give, and you guys, you didn't ask me to give. I just gave. He said, I didn't ask you to give, but you still gave. You still gave. And then Paul says, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because when you give with the right heart, then you're giving out of the gift God has given you. And I said it earlier, only certain people are called to give. Not everybody can give in this, in this way, but I want to be able to help activate this gift within you. If you have that gift to give, it's time for you to start exercising that gift. If you have that gift to give, if you're saying, oh, I, I can't do this, I can't do this, Rich, I, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do slides, well, what can you do? I can give. Yeah, you can give, then you give. Then you give. And that's serving too. See, we've been wired to think in church that, oh, I have to do the camera, I have to do the slides, and I have to do these things, and I have to serve, and serve, 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 serve. We're not even giving the right definition of what a servant really is. And we're telling people that this is what serving looks like by you just doing stuff. And then people are getting used. And we wonder why people are leaving the church because they keep doing and doing and doing and doing and serving and serving and serving and serving. And, serving. and now all along, their heart changes. It changes into bitterness. It changes into resentment. It changes into frustration. It changes into anger. It changes into hate. I'm not going back to that church again because all they did was use me. And God is saying, will you just come back? I'm waiting for you to come back. Will you just come back and change your heart? And change your heart? And change your heart? And change your heart? What baffles me in this? I, I know. Give me one more minute. I know I'm going over. Just give me a minute. At the end, this father, what baffles me? This son says, oh, my gosh. This son says, Father, I'm not worthy to be your son. And then the father says, you came. He doesn't even say anything. He just says, he saw him with compassion, ran to him, kissed him. And then he says, bring the best robes. I'm going to say bring. He didn't say, how could you do this to me, son? I can't believe you did this, but I'm glad you're back. He didn't say anything. How it started with the father not saying anything? Here, here you go. That's a loving father. But then when he came back, he didn't say anything. All he said was, he didn't say anything to him. All he said was, bring this. Let's give him more. Wait, why are you going to give him more? Doesn't he deserve a spanking? <laughs> Doesn't he deserve to be grounded? Doesn't he deserve to get thrown out? You, you, you wasted it. Get out of here. Who do you think you are? Why would you treat me that way? Why would you do that to me? He says, bring, let me give him more. Remember I said God is the best giver? Remember when I said that? I need you to hear, if you hear nothing else, hear this. 
He gives even when we don't deserve it. And he still gives even though you run to all this garbage. He still gives when you're given over to greed. He still gives when you go after these things of the world. And I'm not saying he's going to give you things in the middle of your struggles, like your money and worldly treasures and all these things, because that all comes from Satan. We've already established that. But what God gives you, listen, and my God will supply all my needs, and I'm going to have all these things, and I'm going to have all these riches, and God's going to give you. No, no, no. What God really gives you when you're caught up by all this garbage, do you know what it is? Put it up. Put my last slide up. What God gives you is grace. <laughs> See, we don't, we don't even realize this. This is why God doesn't save you from your situation because he's trying to give you something even in the middle of all the hell you're going through. He's still giving you something. Do you realize that? But, but God's not saving me. And God's not, I'm giving you grace. I'm giving you grace. Grace is freely given because when you're freely living in sin, God wants you to see that only he can set you free. Not the pleasure, not the sex, not the drugs, not the bottle, not the greed, not the sins that so easily ensnare you. No, his grace. Somebody say his grace. When you realize that and you go back to the father willing to serve as a gentleman, as a gentlewoman, willing to give God as God gives, then he opens up the floodgates. Then he gives you what you need. Then he supplies all your riches according to his grace and mercy. Then... You're living at a level of sacrificial giving because this father just gives him and gives him and gives him. But what you need to do is what it says in James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves before the God and he will lift you up in honor. If we are willing to humble ourselves and say, I just want to be a servant, God says, now you get it. Now you can start giving. If you're not willing to be a servant, and I'm not talking about doing things in the church. I'm talking about going to the, this is why, see, this is why we did this in the beginning. I said, go to somebody you don't know. Go to somebody you don't know. Tell them what they need prayer for. You, you don't even realize I've been trying to teach you guys how to give. I've been trying to practically teach you all what it looks like to really give. See, you didn't even realize that, did you? Oh, they, they need prayer or they need, no. They have a need that God is calling you to give, that he's calling you to meet. Are you willing to be a servant? Hear me. Are you willing to be a servant? If you're not willing to be a servant, then your heart's not ready. And if your heart's not ready, then you, should, you have no business giving. Change your heart. Change your heart now. Not tomorrow, now, right now. Change it. We're dealing with God's kingdom. This is how imperative it is. I, I, I could be preaching the rest of the night and the rest of the day and for another five hours, but this is why it changes because we're building God's kingdom and the world doesn't want us to build his kingdom. Satan does not want you to build his kingdom. I probably feel more oppressed than I have ever been. Why? Because we keep giving at a level that we don't even have. That's how I feel. I'm full-time as a pastor, guys, now, and I don't get that much. Thank God for my wife, if she works, that's great, but... I don't know how this works and it doesn't make sense, but we have to give with the right heart in order to see God move. And this is what you have to see. If you've never given before, you need to do this now, now, right now. I'm not, I'm not saying we're going to pass around a plate right now and we're going to have you give right now. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you have to change your heart now, change your heart now, because you know what? God is doing, he's, he's waiting for you to come and say, I've been giving you grace this whole time, waiting for you to come back to me so you can give on a level that I have put in you. See, God has put something in you, you guys don't even realize it. 
And a lot of us aren't even willing to live on the level that God has given us because all we see is what we can't have or what we're going to lose. This was the point of this whole entire series. This is God's kingdom. It's not our kingdom. This is God's kingdom. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. Lord, I know a lot of times you won't save us out of our situations because you want to see. You want to see us change our hearts and come back to you in a place with the right heart posture. So Lord, if anybody in here listening online does not have the right heart posture, Lord, I pray that they give their life over to you right now. Or they ask you into their heart, to your heart, to their heart, that they believe that you died for them and saved them, that you really gave them everything, Lord. And all you're asking them to do is just give out of the goodness of their heart. Give graciously because you give us grace to humble ourselves because you humbled yourself, Lord Jesus. And when we start getting this, Lord, then we can truly start building what you've called us to build. Father, you told me that you will only move at the speed, at the level of your people willing to give. You will move at a pace dependent on the pace that the church sets. And Father, you want to move so much more than where we're at. Father, help us to give, to give like we've never given before, Father God. Because you want our heart. This isn't about money, Lord. This is about the church, us, your people. About being good stewards with the people that you have placed before us. Meeting the need. Graciously, cheerfully, lovingly. So Heavenly Father, we give you our hearts. We give you our lives. I pray that somebody in here has given their life to you. But I pray more than anything, Father, that all of us would be in agreement that we will give with a good heart. Father, help us to give our hearts over to you right now. Help us, Lord. Help us. We can't do it without you. We need you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. And we thank you for this word today, Lord Jesus. In your holy, precious name, Jesus, everybody said, amen. Let's give God some praise in this place.